Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Cardano. If you're not familiar, Cardano is a layer one blockchain. That basically means it's a blockchain that decentralized applications think like decentralized finance applications can build on top of it. And the priorities that Cardano has gone after is to be faster, more scalable than Ethereum, which is the largest layer one blockchain, but to maintain a lot of the benefits of the greater decentralization and security relative to a lot of other alternative layer one blockchains that are out there. So ADA is the native token to the Cardano blockchain, and it's been around for a while. It started back in late 2017. In that cycle, had a big bear market, had a huge run up in the 2020 to 2021 bull market, had another big bear market. And now here we are potentially entering into a new alt season and Cardano is waking up in a major way. If we just look at this rally that started back right around election day here in the United States, we're currently up 128% to the upside on ADA. I think pretty good for anyone who had bought down in these lower ranges. But that's what's already happened. I think what people now care about is what's going to happen in the future. Is ADA going to continue its bull market, its moon mission? Is it going to be able to get back up to prior highs or above? Or are we likely to be tapping out lower? Let's go ahead and talk about some of those issues. So I want to talk about some of our models and what they're seeing, and then also talk about some on-chain data, data that's looking within the Cardano blockchain itself that can tell us about how investors are navigating this market. So to start off with some of our models, I want to first talk about our short-term upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. This is a risk model that we have here at the channel. High values mean high risk, low values mean low risk, and it cares what moves that play out over days to weeks, so shorter in its time horizon. And see, so it does a fantastic job of identifying these really low risk periods where acquiring ADA has been very profitable, as well as these high risk periods where selling out of ADA is likely a good idea, or at the very least, the vast majority of a given move is over. Now, if you look at where we are right now, we're seeing short-term risk really aggressively move to the upside. It's at 3.7 right now. And just historically speaking, it can go higher. It has gone higher, but this is getting pretty elevated where we are right now. Now, this doesn't mean that the bull market is over for ADA by any means. On the short-term UDPI, you can get these big spikes. It then maybe consolidates, cools off a bit, and you can get another leg up after that. So this is not saying that it's over, but in the short term, it is saying that ADA is getting pretty hot right now. It would not be surprising to see some consolidation before too long. Now, if we flip over to the long-term risks, this is our long-term upside downside potential indicator. Here's what moves the play over months to multiple months, so longer in its time horizon. Here, it's not nearly as elevated. We're just slightly above neutral right now. So in a longer term time horizon, it still makes sense to think that there's more upside potential for ADA. But when I look at these together, I just see it suggesting that in the short term, some cooling off might be needed before we can ultimately go and realize the rest of that upside potential that might be here. In a full on alt season, I would expect the entirety of this scale to be in play. And so that's why being at neutral in this part of a bull market is actually a good thing. Now it's not as good as being down here like we were over here or over here, but it's certainly better than being all the way up here. And I expect we will get there at some point or at least close to that at some point in this bull market. But it actually would probably be better if it takes some time to do so. If we have some consolidation, let short-term risk cool off, let long-term risk not just continue to shoot up, then we might actually ultimately reach higher prices than we just go vertical right now. So that's one of the nuances I think it's important to keep in mind. I think a lot of people, when you get into these parts of the market, they just wanna say, now, 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 I want the asset to just keep on pumping, keep on pumping. But actually, if your goal is to make the most profit on the asset, it's actually better for it to take its time to let the market digest moves better before moving back up again. Getting massively overextended too quickly can actually lead to just the bottom falling out and a lower topping out price than you would have gotten to if it took more time to get there. It's a really important market dynamic to understand in these bull markets. So the last of our models that I wanna talk about here before getting to the on-chain data is talking about momentum, specifically momentum bias. So what this model is looking at is momentum bias to the upside. So is it prevailing to the upside and any moves to the downside just quickly reverse and go up? Or is it bias to the downside where you're really in these bear markets where negative momentum is dominating and you can't break out into sustained positive momentum? And you'll notice very distinct patterns of behavior on this metric. 
when you're in these transitions out of, for example, bear markets into bull markets, you'll see this kind of oscillation around zero, where you spend some time in the green, some time in the red, some time in the green, time in the red. Then in a bull market, you're spending way more time up in the green than in the red. And the red is short lived and reverses back to the upside. Then of course, bear markets, the exact opposite, spending a lot of time in the red, very brief attempts to reestablish positive momentum. Then where we've been really all the way through here is more or less like what we saw over here, kind of oscillating around zero, some more sustained upside through this run here, then down over here, just basically hanging out around neutral up and down. But now we're seeing a massive acceleration to the upside. And so what I might think would happen here is that though it's possible ADA is going to need to spend some time cooling off in the short term, we were just talking about that with its short term risk, we might be seeing something like the early stages of one of these earlier bull markets where you get up to these high levels, you kind of bounce around, consolidate, cool off a bit, and then shoot off to the upside again. So that's what I'm going to be watching. And if we do get to extreme, extreme levels like up here, that can actually be a sign of overextension where some concern might be warranted. We're already back up at the levels that we got to here in December of 2023. It'll be notable to see what happens, but really what you want to just see is us spending a lot of time in the green. Whether or not we spend some time consolidating this coming back down, we just want to see this general type of behavior continue. A lot of time in the green, and if we get to the red very briefly, you don't want to see a deep revisiting into the red. That would be a concerning sign, but I don't think we're anywhere near that right now. So across these models, I think more upside is likely as we go further into the bull market, and especially if we do see this big alt season continue, that that would happen. Short term, I would not be surprised to see some consolidation, but that would not be worrying because we still have more room to go in the longer term. Okay, so obviously none of this is financial advice. You should make your own opinions. Now, I want to flip over to a slightly different type of data. So those were our models and what they're seeing. Now we're going to look at on-chain data and look at what people are actually doing on the network to get a glimpse of what we might expect going forward for ADA. So the first thing I wanna talk about is realized price. So I'm gonna start off by talking about the total realized price for ADA. If you're not familiar with this metric, it's basically capturing the average overall cost basis for ADA holders. So anyone who has an ADA wallet that holds ADA, it's basically telling you what price did they buy those ADA at. So on average across the entire network, what was the average price at which people acquired their ADA? And so what you'll see is that in bear markets, you'll tend to see price being below that average cost basis. It makes sense. People tend to have bought at higher levels. Price goes down. The majority of people are at a loss. Then in a bull market, you get above that average cost basis. Now the majority of people are in a profit. And what you'll see in bull markets is that this realized price will shoot up aggressively. Basically, people who bought at lower prices are now taking profits and that low cost basis is being replaced by the person who now bought at this higher price. And then that's bringing the, that average cost basis up. But then in a bear market, you can see the opposite. You'll see the realized price moving down. And what that suggests is that people who bought at these higher levels are now selling at a loss. And so their higher cost basis is being replaced by a lower cost basis, which brings the total aggregate cost basis down. And notably where we are right now, we're actually, if anything, seeing the realized price continue to move down or at least be sideways stable, which suggests that a lot of people are still selling at a loss. And that is offsetting the people who are selling at a profit to lead to no real change in that average cost basis. And we only actually with this pump only just gotten above that total realized price for ADA. And so what this might suggest is that before we start seeing this really aggressive move up on the realized price where people who bought at lower prices are selling and then we start to see that telltale sign of a hot market that leads into a top, we might need to see ADA's price go up quite a bit further. Now what we can look at is the short-term holder cost basis. So that's this red line that I'm showing you here. And this is basically the cost basis of people who have bought their ADA within the last six months. That's what we're looking at here. And what's notable about this cost basis is that it tends to act as important support and resistance levels in bear markets and in bull markets. So you'll see, for example, in this bull market, there were multiple times that breaking above it led to a big run. And then also times where you break above it, you hold it as support, and then you move up further. And then likewise, in bear markets, you tend to act as resistance. You get below it, rally up to it, get rejected, rally up to it, get rejected, so on and so forth. 
And so what we might want to look for as we go forward is how does price react with this realized price? As we go up, maybe we consolidate at some point in the future like we have in the past. Do we hold the short-term realized price as a support level when we retest it next or do we break below it? Holding a support would be bullish, suggesting that the trend will continue after that would happen. Breaking below it would be bearish, suggesting a trend reversal might be coming. We're nowhere close to that yet, but at some point in this bull market, we will retest this and how it reacts will be important. So not the most important thing to watch right now, but it will be, I think, going forward. So the final on-chain data I want to talk about here is what's going on with realized profit and loss on the network. So this is the raw data here. This is denominated in USD, the total profit and loss on a given day that's being realized on the network. What I did is I actually normalized it to the price of ADA. So what we're actually looking at here is the basically the quantity of ADA uh, profit being sold versus the quantity of ADA being sold in a loss. And what I've done with this formula here in orange is just basically applied a 90 day moving average to it. So we can see kind of across time, instead of this really volatile metric that we're seeing here that spikes up and down, just looking over a longer window, are people on aggregate realizing profits or realizing loss over a three month window? That's basically what we're looking at here. Now, the one thing that's interesting when you look at this metric, so I'm just gonna zoom it out a little bit here, is that what you'll see is that in bear markets, a lot of losses get realized as people capitulate out who bought at higher prices. Then in bull markets, you see a lot of profit taking happening. So this is zero right here. There's a zero level on this metric here. So basically in bull markets, that's when you see a lot of aggregate profit taking happening. And then as you go down to the bear market, again, a lot of losses being realized. And what's notable about right now is that on aggregate over the last three months, we've actually seen losses being realized right now. People aren't even realizing profits yet. And so that means that there's a lot of people who bought ADA up at these high points of the last cycle who are just selling into this pump. They're actually accepting a loss, even though ADA is pumping, because they've bought in at such higher levels or slightly higher levels. They're just happy to get out at close to break even. We have not seen this profit taking start yet. So this means a couple of things. First of all, it means that people who bought in over here are maybe not happy to wait for ADA to get back up to that level or to sell or for it to get higher. They're actually just looking to get out and maybe move on to other things. But at the same time, it means people who bought in at these lower levels aren't all selling out to add a lot of profit taking to this mix. So that's what's leading into this average, this overall loss being realized on the network. Now, what you might expect is that if ADA continues to the upside, then the sell pressure will have been exhausted from here, most likely, that allows price to move up further. And then you'd expect the profit taking to happen of people who bought at lower levels. But it's just notable that there is sell pressure that's happening from these levels here. And that's one of the things that's a disadvantage to any asset that's existed for a while. One of the advantages that a brand new asset has is that it doesn't have people who bought at high levels in the last cycle still holding the bag, looking to maybe get out at a reasonable price into a pump. ADA has bag holders. There are people who still hold it from these levels. And so it's going to need to exhaust any sell pressure coming from those people before it can really decisively break out above and especially to new all-time highs. Now, is that possible? Certainly. But it's just something to note that's different about ADA than some brand new asset, like for example, Sui or some of these other ones that are making runs. They don't have to worry about that because they don't have that existing group of bag holders who are holding from higher levels. So something just to watch going forward, in my opinion. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about in relation to ADA is that when you're going into a full-on parabolic bull market, a full-on alt season, then what matters most is narratives, not fundamentals. You'll see people get so caught up with fundamentals and saying, oh, it's all about how fast it is or how decentralized it is or X, Y, and Z, all about something that's supposed to be coming or some use case or whatever. Ultimately, whether or not those things actually are happening or actually things that people value doesn't matter. Fundamentals do not matter in bull markets. What does matter is narratives, narratives that people can tell other people that make them think, oh man, this is going to be the next massive thing. This is going to be the next Ethereum. This is going to be the next Bitcoin. I need to buy it right now. And so really, when you're looking at an asset like ADA, one of the questions that I would ask myself is, what are the narratives that you think could potentially get it there? And be discerning as you think about this. Are these narratives that are likely to capture the attention of retail, really get them in and get them excited and get a lot of money to plow into the ecosystem? If so, great. If not, then that might be a concern. 
So one of the things we can look at that can be a source of narratives for layer ones is decentralized finance. That's been one of the big use cases that has been adopted for layer one protocols. And again, whether or not it's really the use case itself that matters or just the narrative, really in these bull markets, it's the narratives that can go around with it. And so if you see an asset like Cardano currently sitting at number 20 here on DeFi Llama in terms of total value locked in decentralized finance protocols on its chain, we can see that if you denominate in ADA, it's actually been pretty sustainable how much activity has been happening on Cardano in terms of DeFi. This can be one source where if you look at this and you see this start really moving up aggressively, then that can be one thing that people might point to and say, oh, look, ADA is getting a lot of adoption. And then we need to get in now before it you know, becomes too much. We need to get in now before that really ends up catching on and other people get into it. It's things like that that you want to look out for. Now, I leave it up to you to decide whether or not you think there are enough of those bullish narratives and bullish catalysts out there for ADA for, to really launch it up to the highs that it's enjoyed in the last cycle and beyond. But that's one of the things I think is important to keep an eye on is that that is going to be the, what determines the success or failure of altcoins in this cycle. It's going to be what narratives get attached to them and how much it convinces other people to buy in. Now, price pumping itself can be a narrative. People always want to justify why price is pumping. So you will probably see people come up with a lot of explanations for why ADA is pumping and maybe new narratives start to form out of that. But whether or not they catch on is going to be a question that we need to watch going forward. And ultimately, how high it will go will depend on how much hype it can bring back in on itself. Like it or not, that's just how these alt seasons work. It's not about the fundamental value of a network or its technology or how good that is. It's all about how much hype comes around it, how many narratives get spun around it that really catch people's attention. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us over on X. A lot of updates for our models and more over there. You can go to our website, partydigital.io, to see live data for our models for ADA and a bunch of other assets and more link in the description.